Jazz Automatic Garage back today, and uh, we got a 6-0 diagnosis going on with us here today. And this was uh, first off, the guy brought it to me after two of the people looked at it. And the last one <clears throat> wanted to charge him three grand for a new high pressure oil pump. Uh, I'm gonna start off with this is a 07 60, so it's got all the updates with the better high pressure oil pump, which is very uh, it's not near as likely to go out as it was on the 0304. So uh, that's the first thing that threw up a flag with me. So I'm gonna show y'all what we found on that, and then I discovered a whole other problem, which he told me it had been doing this on and off, but I've never seen one do this. So uh, we're headed to the house now. We got uh, a buddy coming over, Dusty Payne, to help out with some stuff. He's about to start his own YouTube channel, and he's uh, starting his own side business doing all automotive, electrical wiring and lighting and stuff like that. So. We're going to have him on the channel today and uh, give him a shout out, show his skills on doing some wiring. So uh, I'm headed back to the house now from Ford, just pick some parts up and to get a cold air charge pipe for a 6.7 uh, where they blow that plastic pipe. So I uh, might show throwing that on too. So we'll catch up with y'all at the house. All right, guys, we're at the house with Troy and the Dusty Payne. The Dusty Payne. The Dusty Payne. The. He hasn't got a name for his channel or his business yet, but I'm trying to come up with maybe painless wiring, painless electrical solutions, something like that. So hit the starter again, let him hear what it's trying to do. Oh, it's not doing anything now. So customer brought me this truck. Uh, last shop, one charging three grand for a high pressure oil pump. Like I mentioned earlier, this is 05 up, which is really rare for the high pressure oil pump to give you trouble on these. Uh, it is deleted. It does have updated uh, stand pipes, dummy plugs, STC fittings been corrected. All that stuff's been done. It's got new injectors in it. Uh, so without going back and checking everybody else's work, I hooked up to Auto Ingenuity, and this is what we got when it happens. I'll show y'all. All right, so we got our Auto Ingenuity hooked up here. We got our ICP pressure here. We got our injector control pressure, IPR, right there. Uh, this is our injector control pressure volts, Fickham main power, and Fickham sink. So you're going to see a one pop up here. It's letting you know that it, the Fickham is communicating with the injectors. You always want to see, you really want to drop below 45 on your Fickham power. And 0.25 is actually right for your ICP volts just sitting here. Maybe just a little high, but it should be about right. Uh, you don't want this to stay at 14.84. It should be in the 30 to 40% range starting probably. So spin her over, Dustin. We'll see what she does. You can hold it for a little while. So you can see how ICP is jumping all over the place. It's not making 500. Try it one more time. Try one more time. It's not gonna do it. I hate to keep abusing it. All right, Whew. so you can see how our ICP volts, or sorry, our ICP pressure, it was almost building to 500. It might hit 500 every now and then. That's probably when it's trying to hit, but it wasn't maintaining it right. Uh, we saw our IPR was jumping up to 85, so it's dumping all that it could possibly dump is what it was trying to do. So what we're gonna do at this point is uh, I came out here, checked the ICP first the other day. Hey, Dusty, there's a plug in that door that I cut off. Let me see it. So if you'll see here, this has got plastic around it right here, around the prongs. So the one that was on here, you can see how somebody, the plastic's missing off of it. You can see it there. That can be a problem with your ICP sometimes. They take this little sheath off and then when you get oil or something in there, it can end up uh, grinding each other out. So now that the ICP is unplugged, now I'm gonna hit it. So we got 49 volts, pick them. Fires right up. The IPR is good at 33.98. I rip it up pretty good, see if you can duplicate the starter problem. So I tried my best to duplicate it, but what this truck was doing 
when you would rivet up and before I figured out it was an ICP sensor, when it was, I got it to run for a little bit. When it would miss and jump around, the starter would randomly engage for a split second and hit the flywheel. It sounded terrible. So then I saw this hodgepodge of bubble wiring down here and this thing was just plugged into this plug down here too. So I unplugged it and then the starter quit doing that issue. So that's where Dusty comes into play right here. He's Mr. Handy with the wiring here. Uh, wires up police cars and everything else with lights and all that. So he's gonna help Automatic Garage out today and get this radio back going and uh, hopefully eliminate the starter problem because I couldn't duplicate it for you now, but that's what we had going on with it. So he's gonna get busy wiring. I'm gonna throw this ICP in and we'll have this six liter going and save him a whole lot of money. Uh, way cheaper than three grand for a high pressure oil pump that wasn't even the problem. So y'all hang on with us. So another thing I asked the customer was, I asked the history about what was going on. He said, well, the ICP sensor is, in, is, is pretty new. I said, well, where's it from? He said, it's from AutoZone. So this is where you don't use AutoZone and O'Reilly and cheap stuff. Either go to Ford or go to International and get you an ICP sensor, because it's quality. Otherwise, you're gonna have the same problem. He was about to lose a whole lot of money on this truck over a stupid little sensor and over somebody's laziness on not diagnosing the truck right. So we're gonna throw this ICP sensor on and the whole problem's gonna be fixed. It's $180, I think, from Ford is what it was. This is the cold air charge pipe for that 6.7 I was telling y'all about. They just get dry and they crack right here along the seam usually. I'll show y'all that. So this is a 2012 6.7. He says, man, I got air hissing everywhere. And he said, it's down on power, it feels like. He pulls trailers and stuff a lot, has a tree business. So these get dry and they crack right here. And then you can see what it does to the hood when it cracks too. It takes all that crankcase recirculation, vent part where the oil is in here and it just blows that crap everywhere when it does it. So that pipe was, uh, I think I got it for like 90 bucks of my price. You can't just buy this, at least that's what Thor told me. So I got the whole charge air cooler pipe right there. So we're gonna throw that on and he'll be good to go. This is Painless Wiring's little giddy up right here. He's got going for him. The toolbox and TV. He's gonna put in some shelves in here. Have him some wiring and all of his connectors and stuff he needs for, for wiring up stuff mobily here. So that's pretty cool. Alright, so most of y'all probably know this, but your ICP sensor's right here and your valve cover behind this charger cooler pipe right there. And you could probably hold this out of the way and do it, but to me it's easier just to undo this end right here. And you can pull your charger cooler back and put your socket on there and put your ICP on real quick. I did replace the pigtail already, trying to eliminate that out of it, trying to save some money. So it does have a new pig pigtail on it already that I had laying around. So that's one other way to tell a cheap one. There's the, the Motorcraft one there. This is your AutoZone O'Reilly's Advance, made in China, cheap one. Usually the Ford one is this tan color too on the plug. What's the price difference? Oh, this is probably, sorry. The Ford one's 180 something dollars, I think is what it was. That one's probably 50 bucks ish. Make sure you got your rubber grommet on here too. And of course, another thing that would have been a telltale sign would have been that this ICP had oil in the plug. 
Because then you know it's bad. Or it's leaking for sure. So what are we videoing here, Dusty? Well, after uh, <laughs> we were rewiring the radio down here, we still had some issues with the audio not working. So we went to pull the dash, and to pull the dash, we had to lower the gear shifter. Putting the gear shifter back up to take the dash off, when you get to reverse, now it won't start. But the radio's not on right now either. Oh, yeah. Great. Would you say this has something to do with China? It could be. What? China. Let's see if it doesn't know. Now the truck starts. <laughs> it's not exactly hands free starting, but <laughs> it's close. Hey, yeah. yeah. It's thought free. You don't have to right. think about stuff. No. <laughs> hey, I mean, what's the first thing you got to do when you get in your car? Put it in reverse. So that starts it. Hey, just, just out of curiosity, it starts normal still with it in part when you turn the key, right? It's in part. It starts in part. All right. Still mind blown? Yeah, I'm not getting anything on this elimination wire here. The only thing we haven't tried is it's leaving all the wires hooked up and not having hooked to the radio, which is probably still going to give us the same result of it not doing it. Yeah, it shouldn't do it because the radio is not drawing power to it. So this is what we found. Unsoldered, or soldered, but uncovered. Uh, bare wire. Mm. So what are you finding in every plug, Dusty? I'm finding a ton of water. Each one of these plugs, as soon as I take it out, a big old drop of water comes out of each plug. And I don't know if you can see, it's soaking wet down in each one of these holes. Each one is corroded inside the fuse block. So we did have a sunroof issue earlier. We uh, we blew the tube out after I pulled it in the garage. They, Dusty was over here first. He said, why is the floor all wet? So we started looking at the sunroof and, and blew that the tube out that comes from up here that was stopped up. Um, still don't know why it was getting in the truck though. Unless it just came from the sunroof, ran down the A-pillar and got down there and dripped all over it. It's possible. Uh, we don't need to ground the shit out of that. No. You want me to hook the batteries or you want to leave it? No, I'm, I'm going to take it off and I'll... So what conclusion have we come to, Timothy? There's a lot of water in this stuff. There's... We're pulling every fuse. We're going to dry this thing out, clean it, dielectric grease it, and put it back in contact cleaner and all that and put it back together. I think this is the root of our problem right here. Well, let's hope so. Is it the root of all evil then? Tim, you need a... Uh, Need a large shirt, a little medium. Extra medium. Makes him look more buff. You need to step up to a man's shirt. Large. Large J. If you want to be a real man, you get a double X. <laughs> large J. Hey guys, automatic garage back. It is the following day, and we are finishing up on the six liter, which uh, I did figure out the ICP like y'all saw yesterday, which is really, to me, a no brainer thing. But uh, evidently to some people, I guess they're just trying to rip people off, other shops are, or um, they're just too lazy to do the work. So we figured that part out. Uh, we went through all the wiring. We found that the sunroof had been leaking on this truck. So we took that fuse panel out, like we showed y'all yesterday, and uh, dried it out, cleaned up a contact cleaner, cleaned all the, the prongs and everything in it put dielectric grease on it, put it back together. Uh, Dusty rewired the radio, got rid of all those uh, bare wires that he found and stuff like that. So that, that's wired right. So uh, the truck's still doing the problem though. The only way to stop the problem is you take the radio out of the loop. If you unplug it, it doesn't do it. So. So when I called the customer and told him what was going on with it, that if you take the radio out of the loop, it stops doing it. Uh, and told him about the fuse panel and the sunroof leaking, that we had fixed the leak, that the drain was cleaned out. You could pour water in it now and nothing came out in the truck anymore. 
and that I wasn't 100% sold on the radio, but that it could still be the fuse panel, but the fuse panel was more expensive. It's 400 and I think 458 from Ford is what they quoted. You can buy used on eBay for 100 to 150 bucks. Um, that the radio was the cheaper option to go with is what I was telling him. And he said, well, let's not even worry about the radio right now. Just put it back in the dash, but leave it unhooked just so I don't have a hole in the dash. This isn't his daily driver. It's mainly a work truck, I think, for uh, rehabbing houses, flipping houses and stuff. They use it for pulling trailers and stuff like that. So that's where we're at. Uh, leaning towards the radio back feeding is what me and Dusty were both thinking. Never seen it. Maybe it could happen. Y'all tell me in the comments below if you've ever seen anything like this. We Googled it. Tried to search anything about the truck randomly starting, back feeding through the radio, whatever else, and couldn't find anything on it. So Dusty's really good with his wire and stuff. He, he did a whole lot of checking, checking grounds, checking hots, checking for back feeding. I don't know, but it's, I just can't believe it's anything else. Plug the radio in, it does it. Unplug the radio, it don't do it. So that's where we're at. Truck's running great, just doesn't have radio in it now. So it's the Automatic Garage signing out. Y'all like, subscribe, comment. Check us out at Facebook. Check us out at automaticgarage.com. We're on Instagram now also on Rumble. Uh, hated to post this video up for y'all because this is the first time I haven't really found the root of a problem with something. So, anyways, hope it didn't disappoint y'all. But also, on a better note, uh, we did save him a lot of money because that other shop was going to charge him three grand for a high pressure oil pump that he didn't need all over laziness. So, it's Automatic Garage signing out. We'll holler at y'all later.